This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Thursday, April 7th. The island's COVID-19 protocols appear to be a damper on tourism business, and officials from the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association say they will be taking their concerns to government. BHTA Chairman Rene Coppin is proposing a review of the mask mandate and other entry protocols. At a news conference today, she revealed that bookings this month are low and the summer is gloomy. Coppin suggests changes will have to be made if Barbados is to be competitive in the current environment. As it stands, we are aware that Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Belize, Cayman, Curaçao, Dominica, Dominican Republic, Grenada, Puerto Rico, St. Lucia, and St. Martin have removed testing requirements for fully vaccinated guests. And in the case of Aruba and DR, the unvaccinated are also able to come in without any testing requirements. Some of these destinations have also removed mask mandates, which is something that already obtains in our major source markets. As you know, the UK dropped mask mandates, I believe it was, it was issued in January. The US has fundamentally across most of their states also reduced or removed mask mandates. And Canada across most of its provinces is also moving in that direction. I will reiterate that we have not yet given our position on this, but we have requested to meet with the relevant stakeholders and authorities to have a discussion and to ask that we review all protocols as we go forward to ensure that they are delivering the intended results based on the best science and information that we currently have available to us. And with consideration and balancing of the many factors that must be borne in mind as we try to move not just management of this pandemic forward, but this entire country forward. Chief Executive Officer of the BHTA Rudy Grant disclosed that over 50% of visitor arrivals for the months of January and February were from the United Kingdom, but that number is quickly dwindling because prospective travellers have been opting for other destinations with less restrictions. If those uh, competitive destinations in this region that are um, presently removing the matter of entry testing, and some of them are removing mass as well. Uh, if you look at our arrival numbers for January and February, what you will see is that 51.5% of those come out of the United Kingdom. And, and I make reference to that because, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's about finding the balance. There's a certain reality to um, the situation that we face. Uh, the government has certainly signaled through the Minister of Health that um, there will be no further lockdowns at this stage and um, no further um, measures taken that would curtail business. And I think it's important for us to be able to identify a balance. Certainly, the two operators coming out of the United Kingdom have indicated to us that there are certain destinations that are now selling better than Barbados. That's the reality. That's not the BHDA holding the position. That's the BHDA communicating exactly what is happening in the marketplace. And the, the truth is, those are things that we do have to pay attention to. Government's proposed pension reform will not in any way reduce the monies of public servants or pensioners. Word of this from Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strawn, who maintained that government will not disadvantage workers in the public sector. Among the proposed changes, new employees in the public sector will have to contribute 40 years of service to qualify for maximum pension. Currently, public servants reach their maximum pension after 33 and a third years. Speaking at a panel discussion hosted by the National Union of Public Workers to explore the issue, Strawn made clear that government is only seeking to improve the way pensions are funded. There's nothing mysterious about potentially what the government is proposing, particularly with respect to those public officers who are who, whose incomes are above the insurable earning earning ceiling. So it is important for me to make it clear that what we are talking about here does not in any way diminish the value of any public officer's pension. It is how it is financed and paid such that fiscally that a lot of, and you're seeing a lot of re other reforms with respect to state-owned enterprises and what they do and how they're funded as well, equally um, taking place. And therefore, without any misinformation going out to the public, I want to give the public officers and the existing, as well as existing pensioners, <laughs> the absolute assurance that the government of Barbados in, in no way is seeking to reduce anybody's pension who is already a pensioner or for those public officers who are in the system already with respect to, to doing this. The options will be made available for not just new persons to enter the public service, but 
to make sure that retirement planning becomes a very critical um, focal point for all employees in Barbados. The stage is all set and all systems are go for Saturday's final for Beach, the World Season 2 competition. Organizers and stakeholders conduct their walkthrough of Golden Square in the city, where finishing touches were being made to the venue. Joining the organizers on the tour was international soca artist Fayan Lyons. The winner will get the opportunity to tour with the artist and her band internationally. She told reporters that Beige is a great competition and could serve as a blueprint for other competitions around the region. I'm looking forward to it being a project that grows and morphs into something that's very, very powerful because I'm, I, I strongly believe um, something like this has the potential to have a ripple effect across the Caribbean. I do not think this product will be um, limited to just Barbados. I'm seeing where this could be a template for other countries now to look at expanding their, their competitions and not having it be um, short-term investments. I... In today's COVID-19 update, a total of 377 people, 185 males and 192 females tested positive for the virus on Wednesday from 1,401 tests carried out by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprised 69 persons under the age of 18 and 308 who were 18 years and older. There were 74 people in isolation facilities, while 1,902 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news in Jamaica, an 8-year-old boy was killed by a gunman in Clarendon, sending shockwaves through the community. More in this report from Ocean Masters of Television, Jamaica. Ocean's children continue to bleed as a result of criminals. The latest incident involves 8-year-old Thomas James Jr., otherwise called Angola, a student of Racecourse Primary in Clarendon. It's understood that the 8-year-old and his father, Thomas James, otherwise called Lion Heights, were at a shop in the Hayesfield community. The shop, located where they live, is operated by the boy's father. It's reported that about 7.45 Wednesday night, a man entered the shop and ordered a cigarette before opening on fire at Lion Heights, hitting him in the upper body. The eight-year-old boy was shot in the head. The gunman escaped on foot. Both victims were assisted to hospital by citizens. James Jr. was pronounced dead upon arrival and Lion Heights was admitted in critical condition. It is very, very sad, unfortunate how the thing happened because when a life is lost, it is one too much and this is a little baby, an eight-year-old child. And so the entire Clarendon Police Division is in mourning for this, the loss of the life of this little boy. It is really, really sad to see the lifeless body of a young child from gunshot wounds to the head. Just two weeks ago, the community was plunged into mourning following the fiery death of two children, four-year-old Michaela Tomlinson and her three-year-old sister, Abigail Tomlinson, and so this charge from the police. From what is happening, we can say that the children are not being cared for sufficiently, notwithstanding that this boy was in the care of his mother and father at the time of the incident. But when we look and see criminals killing these children, we have to wonder what is really happening in our society right now. 
On the international front, Katanji Brown Jackson was confirmed by the Senate on Thursday as the first black woman to serve on the Supreme Court in a milestone for the United States and a victory for President Joe Biden. The final uh, vote a result is 53 in favor, 47 against. That's three Republican senators joining, as you said, uh, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski and Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney, who was uh, really, uh, at least on the images, the only Republican uh, shown on these images, as uh, you saw the standing ovation uh, when uh, the final vote was counted, uh, he was the only Republican seen standing and clapping for the vote and for the confirmation of Katanji Brown uh, Jackson, showing uh, how polarized and uh, how bitterly uh, partisan this uh, confirmation process actually was, even if uh, three Republicans did in the end uh, join the Democrats uh, to make history today, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson becoming uh, the first black female uh, to be confirmed to uh, the Supreme Court of the United States. And in a nod to history, uh, the final vote result was read out loud by the first black female to become vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris, who was presiding over the proceedings uh, today. But it is now official. Katanji Brown Jackson uh, is uh, confirmed to uh, the Supreme Court. And she was actually, according to the White House, in the White House with President Biden and some of the staff watching these Senate proceedings, waiting for that official vote uh, to uh, come down. But she will not uh, be uh, sworn in uh, just yet because Stephen Breyer, the justice that she will be replacing, uh, will only be stepping down at the end of his term, which will be uh, probably late June or early July. And that's when Ketanji Brown Jackson will actually officially be sworn in as a justice of the Supreme Court. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.